<laughs> just as a customary <laughs> stretch every every single time I always do this. Sorry, I just need to stream on my phone. So I, I'm hang on. There we go. Give me a second. Not what I wanna do. There we go. Just want to be able to see the, uh, seems so I can ensure that nothing's going on. Oh, I forgot to, uh, boot up DS4, which is the, uh, software I use to, uh, emulate an Xbox controller so I can play a PS2 game with my PS4 controller? Yes, PS4 controller. Yeah, episode five. Uh, <clears throat> Back at it again with the Countess. Uh, uh. And honestly, this area somehow makes me even more skilled. Uh, let me just... Sorry if I look like I'm covered in sweat. I uh, did just get back from a... Uh, I was going to say a run, but... I'd say like a half jog, half walk. About five kilometers. Which is uh, my daily run. Or my daily... Um, well, one of my two daily exercises. I usually do one form of cardio and one form of uh, strength training. Oh, I said strength training. I, I need to build muscle. My my hands have atrophied uh, pretty bad. I don't know if you can tell. Let me see if the camera's on on me because it's yeah. I don't know if you can tell, but my hands. Let me move my camera so it's actually resting, so it can see me when I rest. Eh, a little bit more. Sorry. <laughs> oh, the stream's over. It's working hard. But you kind of look at my hands, and they kind of look like stubby baby hands. Yeah, I, I need to redevelop my hand muscles. Uh, mostly just from laziness. God, I wish I wish I had literally any real excuse, but no, nah, it's just it's just atrophied because of just because I don't do anything except play video games. But there's two kinds of gamer hands. Ones that have like the welt from like resting your hand on uh, the edge of your keyboard, the edge of your mouse pad. And the other one is just when you just have like actual like undeveloped hands. Oh, I thought that was a hook. I think I should play this one. Yeah, there we go. Now I can see. Sorry, I'm just mostly exploring right now. Like, yeah, I know I should probably be looking for a mission marker, but uh, right now I just wanna, just wanna re-familiarize myself with this area. Cause obviously, like I've said before, I usually don't get. Uh, whenever I revisit this game, I usually don't get past the um, the second Rajan area, just because the uh, the bomb uh, missions just actually make me <laughs> hate my life. Like, I love the rest of the game, but it's just like those, those like, handful of missions that you can count on, like, one or two hands. That just, they drive me insane. Obviously, this game is super loud. Okay, here's the plan. First, take some recon photos around the area. Then, make your way up to the re-education tower. Looks... pleasant enough. Oh, and stay clear of tanks. You know, so you don't get blown up into little sticky pieces. <laughs> oh, he's not wrong though. Ugh, the human body does not does not split into soft, manageable pieces. It, it splits up into like a, just a, a lot. I mean, we're kind of made up of most substances. Yeah, just imagine like. <sighs> Why? Why did I even bring it up? Oh. Yeah, I was just thinking. Oh, I was supposed to take a picture of this thing? Okay. I'm an, I'm an actual moron. I was like, oh, it wants me to take a picture from here. It's like, no, it wants to take... Yeah, I don't know if you get. I mean, I don't really want to spoil it, but 
I think it's kind of obvious that Nayla is kind of trying to screw over the entirety of the Claw Gang. While also, you know, suspiciously seeming like she's a part of it. Because she was definitely in on the uh, Countess messing with Carmelita for no reason. Like, Nila, Nila's motivations are obviously, like, completely twisted up in everything she's doing. So you can kind of, like, without a reasonable doubt, assume that she's, like, just... Uh, she's either, like, a shit disturber who's just trying to, like, stir up chaos, or she's got, like, a master plan. Which, I mean, personally, as a kid, I was like, Nayla's kind of a, like, at the moment you realize that, like, she basically ratted out, for no reason, Kamalita, then you can kind of be like, oh, Nayla's definitely not a nice person, and then you're like, well, she must be working with the Countess, and then she's, like, trying to fight the Countess, and you're like, oh, she has an entirely different plan to the Countess. So, uh, hey, as a kid, like the, uh, it was kind of obvious to me that there was something up. I mean, but also like how in the world, like not even like Nayla this time, but like the Countess, like how in the world do you mistake the Countess for anything but evil? She's a, she's a creepy spider. They knew what they were doing. This, uh... When I first played this game, I was like, "Wow, I didn't know I didn't know there was gonna be weird stuff like uh, in it." Well, well, I mean, you could hear like the the haunted like creepy noises. Yeah, there's there's precedent for what's gonna happen later in the uh, later in this chapter it made by the first game. I'm not gonna spoil it, but actually, as a kid, I was like, "Where in the world did this come from?" Like, everything else kind of made sense, but I played this game first as a child. And not the first actual game in the series, so... Like, oh, that probably shouldn't be there. Oh, I can... I can totally take a picture of the camera. Oh, yeah, I need to take a picture of the, um, the base, or, um, the embassy, or whatever it's supposed to be. Oh, well, I'm here, I may as well pickpock this guard. I do need a lot of money. I think I went around the prison and collected all the balls. But... I'd have to check to make sure. Actually, no, I definitely do. I definitely do. But yeah, as per usual, don't mind the lag. It's uh, just a... Uh, it's an omnipresent problem when you try to emulate games on a... Uh, computer that really isn't supposed to be... Uh, it's not even that my computer is weaker than a PS2, is that... Like, trying to emulate... A PS2 is harder than actually running PS2 games. Because you have to pretend that you're PS2 to trick the game. Yeah. I don't know. Um, that's how it be like sometimes. Well, I need to get. Oh, yeah, this is, this is a pole in the way. I'm like, why, why can't I take a picture? It's like, oh. Uh, would you say that was a inter pole? <laughs> Sorry. I love making puns like that people um the heck do you want me to do or you want me to enter there is that is that the idea oh get into the tower yeah so you want me to get over there but yeah there's there's two uh, factions in this uh area 
Oh no, I need to take a picture of Reddit folks. Careful. But yeah, what I was gonna say is uh, that uh, ironically, the banks are probably more well protected than the police stations or actual prisons. So it makes sense that she would uh, go for that, especially considering the the countess cares about her money more than anything else. That's why she's doing this. It was never about re it was never about uh, improving the you know quality of life for other people. It's all about money. I mean, in a statistic way, the Countess is kind of just doing what the Cooper gang did. Stealing from criminals, but like, in like a totally sick and twisted version of it. You know. Ooh, nice of tabs. I, I love how many things I've learned from video games, like the existence of, you know, jewelry and metals, because I didn't even know about that stuff. Like, like I mean, that was like before I went to school, sort of thing. Like, that's, that's when I was playing this game. Like, in like kindergarten, where they didn't like really teach you. Well, I mean, not metals, but like. Or metals, is what I mean to say. Not metals. Gotta actually pronounce the word right, otherwise, it means something entirely different. Oh, there's the re education tower, but yeah. Um. This game, like, before even, like, Scared Straight was a thing. Like, this is the sort of thing that would, like, like, I never want to go to prison. This is where, this is where you go to die. You know. God, I did not. Not mean to do that. There we go. Gotta love how the enemies have falling animations. Yeah, no, go around. Try working your way around to the tower's window. Is this where they're keeping Karma later, or is she like in regular prison, or just like? I wonder if she ever re like actually had a trial. I mean, not definitely not with the two corrupted uh, other police officers that framed her. The one that framed her and the one that's just like, yeah, there we go. There she is. Bentley, there's more than just the clockwork eyes up here. Why are you doing this? Mila! She set me up. I'm an honest cop. Of course you are. I've read your psychological profile. I know that you're honest. Then why are you doing this to me? Because, dear, you're honest. You see, by chasing after Sly Cooper, you learned too much about the claw gang and its spice operation. It was only a matter of time before you figured out that I was a secret member. So, when Mila gave me a chance to put you in custody, I took it. Coward. You're a disgrace to Interpol. I'll make it my life's work to destroy you. Oh, I'm afraid your life, let alone your life's work, isn't going to last much longer. Once I integrate the clockwork eyes into this device, your life's work will be whatever I tell you. I won't be brainwashed that easily. Quite right. It won't be easy. Or painless. But I will reprogram your mind, and you will take the fall for me at Interpol. Now, just lay back and relax. Go to your happy place. And stay there forever. Oh. I don't think they've seen you. Take a few photos and get out of there. No. Oh. I've got to help Carmelita. She's in trouble here. There's nothing you can do now. Get the recon photos and come back to the safe house. I swear, we'll find a way to help her. God, I remember seeing this scene as a little kid, and I was like, hot damn, this is horrifying. Interesting. Inspector Fox is restrained in an old Iron Tech 250. Crude, but effective. Iron Tech 250? Why, why does it, like, look at this. This is just a, this is just a wooden board with some fucking... Come just some restraints. 
There's metal restraints embedded into it with like screws or something. It's not. It's not like a. <laughs> Bentley described it as that they got it mail ordered from like <laughs> some sort of like t torture, um, like torture, like hardware provider. Like, what the fuck? Um, uh, what the hell? Too sissy. That's that's a mind shuffler. I didn't think they were real. It's made of equal parts science and black magic. Indestructible to conventional weapons. See, like when I heard black magic, I'm like, what do you What do you mean magic? I didn't know this game had magic. But, uh, yeah. When I, after I played the first game, I was like, oh. Oh, it had, yeah, there's magic. There, there's magic. That's what I was talking about. should be hardwired to the systems in this tower. We need to find a way to get it online. All right. Head back to the safe house and we'll get a plan together. The war between Neela and the Contessa has put the castle on high alert. To get at the clockwork eyes, we'll need to subtly manipulate this conflict to our advantage. Here's the plan. <sighs> Murray, sneak into the castle and kidnap the head of security. I want to ask him a few questions. Meanwhile, Sly and I are going to get a little paranormal. See? I'll slip into the crypts beneath the castle and put together a bad mojo bomb. It should be enough to destroy the mind shuffler. Slot, you capture a few local ghosts and drop them into Neela's headquarters. Hopefully the near-death experience will inspire her to purchase more mercenary firepower. We've all got our assignments. Good luck. See, like, I heard Bentley talking about ghosts and shit, and I'm like, what? What do you mean, ghosts? And I was like, oh, it was a thing in the first game. Like, I'm, I was still like, seriously? Well, like, yeah. <laughs> Honestly, after the ghosts, after collecting ghosts, and you know, black magic, like mind control. The, the, the third game, like, literally couldn't surprise me with any sort of like weird stuff. Because I was like, what do you mean there's ghosts? But yeah. Man, yeah, there's, you know, voodoo, hoodoo, all that sort of jazz. Sorry, I just never as a child could manage to get over that. There was ghosts in this game. Like Bentley the super serious like techno wizard. Hey, Murray, can you see the general from there? Nope. Just an old man coming up the ramp. Don't let his appearance fool you. That's General Clawfoot. And he's one of the toughest old soldiers you'll ever see. Not to mention head of castle security. What if he doesn't want to come? I don't want to hurt him. Uh, don't worry about that. He's only afraid of two things. Fire and water. Other than that, you couldn't hurt him if you wanted to. He might even come in handy along the way. As a projectile. <laughs> wow. That is handy. Yeah, I remember this mission where you're basically supposed to kidnap somebody, but at the same time... Like, you're so...
where the game like describes it using his own projectile and like it oh uh, there's there's so many games where you have the ability like there's oh Dang it! Ugh. Oh, that's one of my abilities. I was like, the other game just like described <laughs> you throwing people, and there's like games where you can do that too, like where you can just throw things that you're not supposed to be throwing at people, like um, the boss, one of the boss fights, and. Um, that stranding involves you throwing the luggage at some guy to defeat him. And it's like, what? What am I doing here? Damn it. Damn. Yeah, so you're not being careful as I usually am. It's usually not careful, I mean. Well, there's so many games where you do stuff like that, where you can, like, pick up valuable objects and, like, use them as weapons, or people. But you know. <laughs> oh my god, like, there's nothing funner than when you can, like, uh, like, in Shadow of Mordor, in Shadow of War by extension, where you just use orcs as, like, meat shields. And, like, yeah, it's kind of messed up. Like, we are kidnapping this guy, but, like, also, it's a video game, and <laughs> just the idea of doing this, like, imagine, like, you're using, like, a human as a battering ram. That's basically what you're doing this with this guy, you're basically just, like, throwing him at people. Oh. Well, oh. yeah, I have to protect him from fire and water. Whoops. But, like, this is, like, we're basically taking it a geriatric only. Also, apparently, it's German. Or maybe, I don't I don't know about you, but that sounds German? Or it's supposed to be like a parent of Germany. Or Dutch. Like the German language. But, like, just, uh, uh, like an Xanima where you can, like, drag people's bodies around and you wind up, like, ah, careful. I always felt like throwing him and then running after him was a lot faster, by the way. See? But honestly, I just wanted to spend some time talking. Oh god. Oh god, these... Okay, okay. Let, let's just let the general uh, be while I lose the cops. I doubt he'll go far. Unless unless he, like... <laughs> unless in his geriatric stupor, he uh, decides to do something regrettable. Like, I don't know. Go for a swim. <laughs> Which wouldn't even surprise me, but also would be a little unfortunate. Oh, I should be going down this way. There we go. He actually, the, the absolute madman. He actually is, he's actually going back. Look at him. Yeah, remember when I was just throwing him around? He, it was so easy to. Oh my god, just. Like, actually getting to my hands. Oh, 
Yeah, I was about to say. Well, well, General Clawfoot. We've got a lot to talk about. You wouldn't by chance He's know the security code to the castle gates, hmm? <laughs> Don't feel like talking, huh? How about a little of this? <laughs> Talk, you scoundrel! Cruel and uh, <laughs> cruel and unusual torture. Yeah, that's the sort of thing. Uh, like, like the game just like nonchalantly throws out um, kidnapping, like it's nothing, and then they, you know, had to <laughs> circumvent torture. And I'm just like, okay. <laughs> like even as a kid, I knew it was like, oh, they're gonna beat it out of him. Obviously, they couldn't actually, because that would be, you know, a little, that would probably get them a mature rating if they just, like, straight up started to, like, pound on him. But, like, the Contessa, like, it's it's sort of weird that, like, games, like, evil characters can kind of do anything. Like, but the good guys, you know, like, it's, it's nothing to have one character, like, an evil character be an absolute monster, but don't allow anybody else being a monster. That's it. I knew she'd have a bad mojo collector to transport the overflow. Huh? It's a semi-magical device that sucks up bad mojo. I'll need it to gather the runoff from these spouts. Wow. Sounds easy. Not really. That mojo is a powerfully dark force. Take any damage while carrying that collector and you're done for. Wow. Sounds hard. Yes, it presents an interesting tactical challenge. Perhaps I could use the death traps native to these crypts against any foe that might attempt to thwart my collection of the ectoplasm. to smash up the guards before they ever got near me. Precisely. Once all four cylinders of the collection device are full, that should be enough black magic to destroy the mind shuffler. Oh god. Just just me just casually dropping a bomb in front of my own face. Hey, yeah, this is the thing that I love about this area, is that, like, you just... Like, as a kid, I didn't really understand what I was supposed to be doing, but that's because I didn't really understand what was going on. But, like, it was so fun. As a kid, it's like, it's, how satisfying is it to... Like, this is the thing, is that they couldn't torture people, but they could, like, literally smash these people to pieces, and I'm like... But but I know like you, you got to toe a fine line when you um, make games that involve certain topics, and then there's just like GTA Five where it's just like yeah whatever yeah we got torture what about it. Yeah, the first one was kind of simple, but... Is it, do I remember actually having to navigate this area? Oh my god, yeah. Clem Murray has to, uh... <laughs> has to be the guy on the other end.
I wouldn't have him just be able to shoot these, would I? But would I be able to? Oh no. But what would I be able to do this? Oh. Wouldn't that be convenient? Wouldn't that be nice and convenient? Sorry. The game out of your legs, I like the lag with it. area oh as, as a kid i didn't know what was going on but as an adult i'm like oh this is satisfying but then you think about it oh okay so that's what that does where are these guys coming from by the way, it's not ready yet. Mm, yeah, chunky salsa. Oh, we gotta be careful. Yeah, the right, the one on the right is really hard for me to use. Ooh, 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 ooh. Bye. Right there. Oh, it swings back. I need time is just right. It's actually great. Yep, there you go. Just literally only need these two switches and I'm golden. Oh, it's so satisfying. Another chamber in my mojo collector is full. Moving on to the third crypt. God, that's actually like super sad. So I just don't, just to this press buttons and watch people just, just get absolutely destroyed. You can basically watch out anybody as Bentley uh, by just shrinking them and then smashing them. Oh, don't shoot at me! <laughs> I was like, oh god, it noticed me. Yeah. But yeah, if this area doesn't scare. Well, if, if, if as a kid you played this game and it didn't scare you, like, big ups to you, because, like, holy shit. You know. Terror's not lagging too bad, honestly. Just compared to the first game. Oh, it shit, the first game. I uh, I didn't have any idea how to run it. Okay, what does this do? Okay, that's what that does. But this is probably my least favorite area of these. Oh god, yeah. You First triangle instead of circle, like just an absolute melon. Yeah, sorry if I go a little bit silent. This is uh, kind of complicated. I that somehow didn't hit me at all. Oh, 
Oh, there you go. Fill the room with uh, sleepy time gas. God, I wish I, I wish I had that on the man. I wish I could go asleep sleep as easily as these uh, these guards can uh, keep up sleep. Wait. I, yeah, I uh, I'm not used, to, I'm not used to the uh, PS2 control scheme. I don't have the buttons memorized. I, uh, hey, you're probably wondering, like, oh, you can't just like leave the guards alive. Or like you can't just like avoid the guards until the time runs out. It's uh, it's based on. I was just being reckless. That's my fault. But um, it's based on it, the, the progression of the time is based on uh, defeating guards. Do it. Like I can certainly. Oh, let, let, let's actually test it out. Let's see if we can do a pacifist. Uh, what in the world's my thing with pacifism? Uh, honestly, people are like, oh yeah, I love pacifism. It's like, I'd rather play a stealth game without ever being stealthy than play a combat game while being passive. Unless that pacifism involved like not being the aggressor and just having things break upon your body. Like, you know, that's just me. Oh no, I can't just... Huh. There's something wrong. But see, like, this is the thing that we don't like passes. It says, like, you just... Like, you just find a pattern that works, and then you just abuse it. I like, how, I like how when I was playing the Xanima run, I was supposed to be pacifistic. But the game just sort of rebuked me and had the game crash like an hour and a half in. And I was like, okay, fine. The game doesn't want me to- I was like, how am I gonna end it? Because the game doesn't have like a definitive ending. It's like, what am I supposed to do? At least in a like normal run, you can just like defeat everything. But in this, like... Okay, okay, technically still pacifism. That's the thing we'll see. Can we win? No? Um. Let's give it a second. No, I guess you. I guess you have to finish them off. We'll do it like this. Yeah. See? I was both right and wrong. Yeah, you have to finish them off before, um... You're allowed to leave. Which, you know, makes sense. I like I like how Murray like doesn't doubt me at all. He's just like, yeah, go ahead, dude. Whoa, whoa, whoa okay, okay, sorry about running this. Hey, okay. have to worry too much because I already know how to deal with these guys. The thing is you can also just set up like garbage like this where you just like set like three bombs down and then run away. It defeats anything in the game. As Bentley. See? Who needs traps when you can just bomb ahead of yourself? But yeah, three bombs. Three bombs will defeat anything assuming that they all three hit. Yeah, and then I just... Ah, get around him! 
and then there's all the, all the wars of me, and then several. Oh, sorry, I'm. <laughs> Woo! Just a little too excited. Oh okay. god! That's my problem. So I always press it three times, or like I mash it to get the three times, and then I press it a fourth time and then I die. Let's see. Oh, he still found the water. Me as a kid, like I spent so much time messing around with the combat that like I was like, what do I need the traps for? But as an adult, I'm like, oh, it's so satisfying to hit something with a trap. So I actually wish um, you guys know um, Dark Deception, uh, Technos Deception. Oh my god, There's something about that game that I wish there was more games like that. Where you, like all you're doing is like setting up traps or like even if it's just like an optional thing like the like oh there's that there's um that mission in uh oblivion in the uh somerset isle dlc or the Sh shimmering isle simmering I shimmering isle dlc that uh you basically play as like a trap master messing with uh, a group of uh adventurers and i'm just like oh this is so sad this is what D this is what being a dm in a D, D game is it's just setting up just uh what i don't think that's supposed to spawn there maybe it is but like it's, it's kind of funny that some like clown parked in front of murray But yeah, like that mission and that game, or Deception, oh my god. It... Just thinking about playing a game like that, like obviously it's, once again, I had to emulate it, which... <laughs> We've already seen what this game does to my, em or, uh, my computer. But, like I wish like a modern game came out like that. Like the same thing with like Dungeon Keeper. It was also great for that, like that's... Uh... That's what I'm talking about. When I when I mention niche games and I say like, man, I wish there were more of them, like there's some games that uh, like hit a niche like spot for me that were never touched again. Like just so sad. Sounds pretty harsh. Does the old girl really deserve that sort of treatment? Weren't you listening? She was an evil wolf priestess. Once you smash the coffin, it'll free all the ghosts trapped in there with her. Okay, I don't know where you're going with all of this, but freeing trapped ghosts sounds vaguely heroic. <laughs> Sly is just like, well, what about my heroism? Cause he's he's truly the Robin Hood of the group. Matt Murray is the lovable, you know, misguided moron, and Bentley is just sort of like the cold, calculating uh, brains of the operation. Damn it! Oh, that's what I love about this game is that like you have stuff like that where you're just like, oh, it's like like if this is any other character, they have to put it up with. You this way and then like you see Sly and it's like oh he could just do this but especially in the third game where everybody gets their own sort of like niche to fill Bentley Bentley is honestly my favorite uh, character in the third game in terms of like traversal even above Sly obviously Bentley can't reach the heights that Sly can in certain areas but he's definitely like Pretty mobile. And I mean, it won't be today, but you guys can definitely see if this is like your first. Man, I'm, part of me doesn't want anybody's first time seeing this game to be me, but like. But also, why not? I think I remember hating this mission.
capture in your monocucom to capture goats. Didn't I just set these guys free? Why would I want to capture them again? Not to worry. It's only a short-term confinement. Gather all the ghosts, then set them free down the chimney of Zila's headquarters. I get you. She'll think it's a sneak attack from the Contessa. Correct. If I did my math right, and I always do my math right, Zila should respond to the assault by purchasing more firepower. Anything bad for the Contessa is good for us. And we get to really freak out Neela. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They are, uh, that's my favorite part of this mission, is that there's no hero. I mean, aside from maybe just slime the game, but like, even then... <laughs> even then, they're not, like, they're, I mean, they're not speaking clean. They're still... I mean, they're still criminals. Like, everybody in this game is kind of, well, I wouldn't say evil, but kind of, like... Dubious. It do be like that. Sorry. Uh, uh, casual streamer, full time memer. Dad joke extraordinaire. Uh, God, I hate, I hate how accurate they are. Yeah, honestly, in terms of like pure combat capability, um, Bentley's actually pretty good. Cause he can, like I said before, he can basically kill anything. He can basically kill anything with the right amount of uh, explosive. Yeah. Oh yeah, this is why I hate this area. It's you have to find the ghost, and then they just fly through the they just fly through the map, and you're like, "What? Why? Why you gotta be like this ghost? Why couldn't you just be like a normal person, just like walk around?" God damn. Stop. It's like by the time you catch up to them, you basically have to wait for them to pass by you, and they have long roaming cycles. You gotta let like, time move. <sighs> of course. You know, just straight up guillotine. This game's dark. And no, I don't just mean the lighting. <laughs> Sorry. Stupid, uh... Pointless thing to say, but... Alright, let's see if I can take a picture. I think my problem was that you... It was hard to take a picture of something that's far away. Like, if I could take a picture from, like, a vantage point, and the game didn't, like, sass me for it, it'd be fine. This guy and then give it on. Golden pocket watch. Yeah, that doesn't look like a pocket watch at all. I'm gonna be honest. But then again, it's it's early, uh, early or er, like mid, yeah, early, early 2000s like polygon hell for gaming. But honestly, like even with the. Uh, like, like, I should be able to take a picture of this. Uh, but lo luckily, yeah, I'm not doing this by myself, because holy shit, if I was doing this by myself, I would literally be doing... I'd literally rather do anything else other than taking pictures of ghosts. Also, it's the fact you have to capture nine of them! Nine. Well, oh, you had to contend with the rest of the goddamn game too. Luckily, this um, map, I think it's, it feels more compact. It feels more like double and triple layered, but it, it still feels like it's squeezed into a more 
more concise area. Also, that was kind of... Oh, damn it. And what I hate is... That... Sorry. Keep pausing to take the picture. But, um, the thing I hate is that sometimes you have the picture, and it tells you that it's good, and then the game's like, well, it took you a millisecond, and, you know, after some time to, you know, adjust, the council has decided, uh, you know... I'm just like, so you lied to me. It's like, we didn't lie to you, we just obfuscated the truth. I'm like, that's what, that is lying by any other words. I don't know. Oh, right, that doesn't last forever. <laughs> I was like, oh, I got this. And I'm like, oh no. Yeah, I'm excited. Like, uh, some people might be like, why are you playing Kids of Pets so much? Um, uh, you know, because I always claim to be like, oh yeah, I'm not going to be holding the leg in the game, but like right now. But the thing is that I want to play what I want to play. If I want to play something, I'm going to play it. And like, whatever, I, like, like, it's either I play Caves of Cut on stream or off stream. Because <laughs> it's, it's a game that I'm really... Well, I was, I was waiting for some more patches to come out just to make the... Well, really, like, the, the last time I got into the game, or the, uh, the last patch notes I saw that made me want to play the game again was the Chimera patch notes, and I was just like, okay. Well, let me let, let me wait just a little bit longer for, like, all the kings to get out of that, like, the, you know, like, wait for a stable version, like, really stable version after that came out, and I was like, okay. My time's now. Which is why, like, basically, like, that's why I've been playing it so much, is because, like, you know, the game is, has improved in the areas that I like. You know, it, it was time for me to get back into it, because it's the game that I return to every so often, like, every few months I return to it. And, like, as you probably tell, I have, like, before I started streaming, I didn't get to go about that. Well, mainly because mainly I wasn't motivated to get to go out though, but like, now I'm like, well, these people might want to see me try to make stories, so I was like, okay, do it. Like the Bela quest, which I heard wasn't like, I mean, it was worth doing, but it wasn't worth, it, it wasn't ex, it wasn't an experience worth doing. And yes, I know, I'm, I'm talking about one game, I'll play another, but like, <gasps> You you try making a conversation over a game that you uh, you know you're playing when the when the mission start to get really tedious. Also, I think I can maybe get pictures from on top of that blimp, but I don't know how to get up there. Aside from maybe like something to synergizes with my like unless yeah, see this like sort of it sort of looks like a fan. If this was on. Or if it's even a fan, I don't know. Maybe it's just a great that looks very obtuse. See, and stuff like that. But um, but yeah, like if I was given, uh... sorry, I'm just. But yeah, the, the reason I'm talking about Kingdom of Cut or just about anything I will tell you right now is because this is a very tedious mission. You kind of gotta go to the four corners of the world because all the ghosts have gone like their own separate ways, and then you have to like you have to get decently close to get reliable like picture opportunities. So I'm talking about cut, but like the reason I was playing the um, main story is because people might want to watch somebody get to them for the first time. They might want to see somebody see them for the first time, and you know, some people might say like you really played like hundreds of hours of this game and you've never seen the full main story, and it's like. You try playing it. <laughs> Don't judge me. Don't judge me until you play the game yourself. It's not easy, my man. See, then you get stuff like this where this dude is like only like showing himself to one area. But they get. That's the real reason I hate the uh, longer missions is because, you yeah. know. If the checkpoints are bad, like you actually just like I, I like make like one 
mistake. See, this is where this guy goes. And he's just like on this side. And you can barely take a picture of him, and then, he, and then he disappears. And then you gotta reposition, get ready to take this picture. Okay, there we go. Oh, the game didn't give me that. I was actually gonna rip my hair out. I make that claim all the time, but see, mistakes like that. Like, if I go back to zero out of nine, uh, this will be the last mission I do for the day. Because I will. <laughs> That's why I keep playing so many slides, because I don't want to be burnt out on this game to the point where it's a chore. And I don't really want to, like, hate myself during the tedious parts. I just want to, you know what, enjoy all of it. Because I don't think I don't think this game deserves me, like, not enjoying it. Or, like, you know, somebody playing it and then being like, oh, this stuff. Please, please have checkpoints, please. <laughs> See, this is my fault for, like, making mistakes. Oh, God. Okay, so it... It checkpoints in threes. Oh no, it, it gave me everything. Yeah, see, this game, uh... If this was one, I would have lives, and if I ran out of lives, I would just restart the entire mission. Well, except... Oh god, this is the thing, is that... You have a mission in this game, there's two types of missions. One where you're... In, like, a very specific... Tiny little alcove area. Like, like an area designed for the mission, like what the Bentley just did. And then an area, and then a, uh, a mission like this where you use the entirety of the map. There is one up here. I was like, where in the hell is it? Didn't think to look directly behind me. Well, I mean, I thought about it, but I was like, no, I didn't do it. Oh, yeah, with Caves of Cod, like, I'm, as you can tell, not skilled at the game to a very high degree. But, like, <laughs> oh my god, I hope, I hope my face, like, you can just see as I sunk back in the chair a little more. And my body just became a little more rigid. And then my body just sort of like collapsed into... Well, I mean, I I'm describing it more than what happened to me just now, but like... Just... Like, I could feel my back tense. And relax as that happened. Like, I was just like... Don't freak out. But yeah. Oh yeah, the, uh, the picture missions are fun. Well, not these picture missions, like, picture missions are an okay mechanic, but like, now they're like this. Oh yeah, you can kind of understand when I was playing this as a kid, with, I mean, you, you've seen my behavior, like, even as an adult, I'm so impatient. Which is how I get myself killed in like a lot of games, especially like anyone that involves stealth. Sorry. Um, or like, you know, any sort of skill revolving around patience. But you can understand that if you were, if you just spent the past like 10, 20 minutes on this one mission, like you would be having a fit too. Where the heck is it? Where the heck is it? Is it just up this building? And now I'm back to the floor. And this area is a lot more vertical than the uh, other areas of this. Um... I mean, yeah, yeah this that area is definitely more vertical. Well, that's kind of my problem is that it's so easy to fall down and it's so tedious to get back up that when you have a mission that has you traverse the entire map it takes so long it takes so much of my time on this earth oh, yeah. which results in me losing my patience and then losing my patience results in me you know wasting more of my time Like, I'll keep segueing back and forth between the game 
and Caves of Cut or whatever. God, I wish I could just smack the shit out of these ghosts to make them more compliant to my uh, flash photography. Bad framing point at the object. I was pointing at the object. You can kind of see why the, um... You can kind of see what I'm talking about when it comes to, uh... You like power-ups in the game, where, like, some of them are essential and some of them are not. Like, this power is kind of... Like, see? How in the heck was I supposed to get on that ledge otherwise? The ones you can buy with, um... Your coins are essential, the ones you get from vaults are not. Some of them. I like, I like how they literally made uh, the tanks in the game. Like, well, at least the ones in the pass area have like force fields to prevent the shenanigans of just riding them. War, eh? Perhaps it's time I purchase a little air power. A few bombers should put that old charlatan in her place. Halfway through the game. All right, fellas, let's get down to business. The first steps to escalating the war between Neela and the Contessa have gone well. We are down to the final setups before we spring our trap. Sly, I need you to steal a voice modulator from the castle and install it under Neela's headquarters. If all goes as planned, it should allow us to give orders to her mercenaries without being detected. Unfortunately, Neela's recent bomber purchase has made her army over-enthusiastic, and they might strike before we're ready. Which leads me to Murray. I need you to hotwire one of the Contessa's tanks and go to town on the mercenaries. We just need to intimidate them a little. And finally, I'll venture back into the crypt to power up that old computer in the re-education tower. We're going to need it to save Carmelita. Oh, and Sly, if you haven't already got one, you'll need to buy a paraglider See? for the heist. Okay, let's move out. Game just like straight up tells you you need it. I mean, they're not strictly required, but they're very, very useful. Okay, just one for each character. That's a Gucci. God damn it! I hate how I've heard so many people say Gucci. I like now I start saying it. But yeah, let's uh Honestly I might have to peek into the next area more. Just this is gonna be fast. It's gonna be over soon. Guessing you'd like me to steal the device and hook it up for our side, giving us control over Neela's mercenaries. Sounds great. You'll have to steal a few keys here or there to get access to the more secure areas of the castle. If there's pockets to be picked, I'm your man. First, steal a wiretap and the voice modulator, then head for the sewers beneath Neela's headquarters. I'm on it. I guess somehow the game just gives you the keys, and some, or not some keys, some missions just give you the keys, and some make you work for it.
like how the two guards sort of work in tandem that like they're actually really smart because like i guess the kid's brain this is actually a like an incredibly obnoxious setup but like as an adult you're like as as a kid i would just do this to one of them and then i would just disappear and i'll do that and then i would take his pocket but As an adult, I'd rather uh, have just the monicum of patience required. But do these guys have the same sort of force wheels? Oh, I think they don't. Well, they are, they also cover for each other. They're different uh, make and model, obviously. But I always, I always love how the map changes as you do the missions. Like most of the missions have permanent effects on the map. Like even if it's just aesthetic, it's still like satisfying to know that your work has uh, that your work has uh, affected the world. Honestly, I'm. I think I might actually be more excited for the third game than this game. Like, this is my childhood, and the third game is sort of like the sequel to my childhood. But also, it's just. Like, they kind of encapsulated everything good about the second game and just made it better. Because instead of, like, having the like, questionable, like, operate. Like, like, Bentley and Murray were their own characters, but they kind of took a backseat to slime in the... Obviously, the first game, they took a total backseat. In the second game, they kind of took a bit of a backseat. And in the third game, like, everybody's kind of... kind of equal in their capabilities of, you know, getting the job done. You know, they all have their strengths and weaknesses. They still have their strengths and weaknesses in this game, but... And honestly, in the combat, in the third game, I, I've already said Bentley was my favorite, but the tr in Traversal, Bentley's my favorite. Uh, just because of the way he does it. But in third game, in terms of combat, Sly is by hand, like, hands down the one that I've used the most. Ma mainly because a lot of missions still require you to use them. Or not, not missions, but like certain mini games require you to use just him and you can't like switch out. Okay, I need to disappear. So you gotta be careful of the uh, the bombers because they will uh, bomb you. This is what I was talking about when I said, like, it permanently affects the map. Like, and when we destroy those tanks, they will, you know, no longer be as many, if any, tanks going around. Well, not, not on the, uh, other side. Man. God, I love this. God, I love Sucker Punch. I was doing I was gonna say that I wish they sucker punch me in the crotch. In this game, obviously Murray's my favorite combat character, but third game, Sly Sly ends up with so much power, but like yeah, Murray is still Murray. Boy. Like, the amount of, like, combo shenanigans, at least from what I remember, you could do, like, some actual comboing in the, uh, third game. You could also be wrong. The one problem I have with the third game is the tutorials. More than anything. Like, what do you mean, tutorials? Like, trust me. Wired... They're not wired. Trust me, the tutorial... The first tutorial... 
the three actually makes me upset. This is how you should do as a kid, is I used to like recklessly go in and then I would just like, like okay, time to, time to start harvesting HP. Yeah, I didn't recall that uh, the health packs actually restore your uh, ability juice. I was about to say ability squirts. Like, excuse me, brain? What in the hell? I love... I love just the insanity. And like, you know, probably, I probably shouldn't tell people, but my brain keeps, like... Like, the lines my brain keeps feeding me. Like, I'm so glad that I'm not, like, a, an actor, and my brain is, like, a movie director. Because, like, holy shit, if these were... If my brain was the one feeding me all of my lines, I would actually want to die. This is my father. This is what your fathers watch. I had to wear this hunk of metal up my ass three years. Or, oh, god damn. See? I'm like a petulant child, man. Like, I can't believe it. But yeah, let's, um, smarten up. Where? Sly! Sly! Where in the fuck is Sly going half the time? So much I need help, even or health. Health. Okay, there it is. That's my one problem with this big map, is that you can't see any of the markers. Because everything's so tall. Discord, so I'm not like blasted by a notification if somebody adds me somewhere. There we go. Oh, yeah, just give this lag a second to uh, stabilize. Wait. Yeah. He dropped from the sky. How in the world is he still aggro? How is he still alive that he'd be aggro to me? Who in the oh. Oh, it's the bird guy above me. I was like, who in the world is, who in the world is still aware of my existence? All right, should be pretty close. All oh, right, he's over to the right of me, so I should. I think I'm gonna be careful with these gargoyles because like, 
actually reveal a guy. Oh god, I didn't... Yeah, that's the thing is that some of the enemies gain powers as the uh, levels progress. Or the missions progress, I should say. So you gotta be careful. Oh my god, what the heck is going on here? What in the actual heck is going on here? Just... Just like side up alongside of him and just... Oh! Oh my god, look how far I flew! Uh... Oh, I actually ended up above him. Again. Actually super lucky. Oh, man. Guess what? <laughs> might be marked in my Bionocucon, but I can't see the marker around the buildings, Bentley. Please. Where? Please, no. <laughs> I have no idea. Oh. Is it this way? No. There it is. Oh. My. Oh! I actually like clenched my entire being as I uh, was discovered there. They posted a lot of security around the voice modulator. Why? Why is it like max security around the uh, thing? All oh, right, I don't have any. Why not? I can smack this. Yeah. Guard from his post by making a little noise. Yeah. I was like, how in the world are you supposed to do this mission if you um don't have any juice left? Yeah, you just you just smash the objects. I've been relying on the the alarm clock this entire time, so I completely forgot. Yeah, I don't think these guys can not reveal enemies. Be revealed as enemies. Oh, like <laughs> you can't just pick it up like a normal person. He has to jump up in the air and like <laughs> magnetize it to his body. Oh god. Okay. Alright, sorry, my dude. Today is not your day. Oh, you're still. All right, he might be patrolling now. Uh, you have anything in your pockets? No, I'm just gonna get around just to see if he has a health pack. Oh, red cross. I don't even know. Like, when the world is Sly healing himself, but like, like it's just, it's just like, like it's just. It's just like a red cross. Like not even a red cross, but like a red X. Well, I assume it's on the contestant side of the map, but... Okay, over there. Oh, you, you can see my problem, that you can barely see above the buildings to see the markers. Regardless of how tall the markers end up being, like, you still have to be able to see high enough to look over the buildings to see them. Ugh. Oh. Oh, I keep forgetting the fighter jets were around. Oh. I thought he was taking a nap for a second, I'm like, seriously? <gasps> like, ah, 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 press the button! Okay. Okay, the other one's also there. I might have to get rid of the, uh... <laughs> I was thinking to myself, oh, maybe I could get a health pack off of this. <laughs> off of this random destructible object, and I'm like, <laughs> like, the moment I press the button, I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> Oh god, I forgot the explosive barrels. They, they, they... <laughs> the Contessa's heard about me uh, destroying everything in my wake as I look for uh, tiny amounts of uh, money. But like, you saw that. Like, What in the world am I using to heal myself? Like, am I just rubbing that, uh, that red thing on my body? Like, what is it doing to heal? Is he eating it? Is it candy? Like how 
How does it help him? That's like me taking in, like a box of bandages and like rubbing the individual bandages on my body. It's like it's not gonna do anything. Like. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh. I think they might have saw me go under here. I'm like, yeah, I was about to say, they're probably gonna. In the face of. Oh, you gotta stay in the smoke to stay hidden. Oh. And that was probably not. Alright, we just gotta wait for the guards to like return to their normal positions before we can actually pickpocket them. Or, well, I mean, because I'm impatient. I'm just gonna do that. And then. Apparently, the guard didn't notice me. So, uh, I guess I'll take the win. Oh. <laughs> That's some quality thieving as you assault the, uh, both of the key holders. Oh, oh. Oh, man. Just the sudden, like, explosive droppings. And I just. This, this area is so hostile. Like, the other areas were kind of just like, oh, it was guarded. But this, like, there's traps everywhere. There's bombers flying about. Like, oh my god. Yes, I know Bentley. I can see, I can see the blue uh, marker. Right. And we're in. Oh God. I'm like, what in the world does that sound? It's like, oh, it's a tentacle. It's like, I've watched enough anime to know where this is going. Please, no. Looks like we got lucky. The Contessa's men have already excavated Mila's satellite cable. How should I proceed? Slice in the wiretap, then attach the voice modulator. I'll broadcast from the safe house to make sure it works. This is going to be so cool. See, Beth, he's test then. Uh, hello, mercenary tank forces. Spot spinning in turrets for me. Gad, this is cool. Uh, I mean, you are all really cool. Carry on. But yeah, just like, I, I love the idea that, um, that the Contessa was already planning to use those things that we, uh, stole from her. It just hadn't got to it yet. And like... What's stopping them from just like hijacking the thing that we set up? Like I guess... Just they did quite inattentiveness, but like... There's a, uh, yeah, there's a mission for each character, so I have to repeatedly go back. Wait, can I just go to character select? No. That'd be nice. I mean, I could go to chapter select, but that would require, like, loading the entire map back in. Alright, Murray, you're up. Classic Murray, like, you have to sneak over to get one of the Contessa's tanks. And I'm like, sneaking? <laughs> Murray sneaking? That's not happening. Murray does not sneak. He simply intimidates his opponents into not being able to see him. Or, well, choosing not to see him, that's what I should have said, but... Oh, well. Murray, use both analog sticks to drive the tank. Press both up to move forward, both down to go in reverse, and in opposite directions to rotate. To fire your turret, tap the R1 button. You'll need to take out six 
six tanks to get the job done. Oh yeah, because you control them both. You use them. Okay, so that was what you would expect. It's just like in the simulation. <laughs> just like in the simulation, yeah. This actually like kind of makes sense. Do, 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 do. Sorry. I'm... It's it's a Brit. It's a bit brain numbing to um, trying to control it. Well, I mean. It's kind of distracting, I should say, to uh, the control men as well. It's kind of hard to control both the uh, analog sticks at the exact same time. It's more easier to control one than the other, and then both in the same direction, and uh, using both at the same time. Yeah, I might not actually get to this mission without failing. But oh well. I never claim to be a perfect uh, Sly Cooper player. But you can attack him from super far away. Even how strong it is, you're surprised. I'm surprised you can't just like straight up pick a guy up and throw him at one of those planes. I mean, for the reason that they're here, but like also, we brought them into this world, we could totally destroy them. Oh, apparently, there's still tanks. Well, I mean, the tanks, tanks should be gone, or well, some of them should be gone, but uh, unfortunately. It's not even that they should be gone, it's that it would have been nice if they got rid of them. Can Bentley destroy these tanks, by the way? I mean, we've just proven that they're not immortal machines. But, uh, I mean, I'm literally just going to be doing this for like... Eh, just for prosperity's sake. Ah! Okay, that's, that was a bit of a board. I mean, it's making noises like they're gonna destroy them. No, okay, they're 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 unbreakable machines. Inconceivable! These tanks are invincible. Mind me. I can't imagine the, a crossbow is too, uh, 
Well, it depends on how you wield it, but definitely not slapping it side to side. I'm pretty sure you're more likely to break your crossbow and actually deal any sort of damage. God, I have so much dust. No, no. How are you gonna hack so the explaining. computers down there when they've got no power? According to General Clawfoot, a uh, mobile energy source is stored at the end of this hallway. Hallway is a pretty kind term for what looks to be like a complex medieval gauntlet of death. Yes. Oh, this is the well, mission I hated. While the idea of jumping down a crypt filled with whirling, razor sharp spikes might scare me, in fact, terrorize my every fiber, it's the only way to power up that old computer at the re education tower. Without that thing online, we'll never get at the clockwork eyes or free Carmelina. You're a good man, Bentley. Just make sure those traps don't rip you into a hundred little turtle pieces. Why'd you have to say that? <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, Bentley really isn't somebody that should be doing this sort of thing. This, should, this is more of a sly move. They'll be messing with traps, but... What can you do? What can you do but a part? Do the jumping puzzle as best you can. Do the jumping puzzle, walk past it because you're invincible. Yeah, there's no Dark Souls. This is no Sense Fortress. This is. This is easy compared to Sense Fortress. That, that's the that's the that's the model that all like difficult oh god but let's uh, let's uh well, once we get past it, let's appreciate that it's it's just like look at this it's like just awful look at this construction Oh god, no, there's, oh god, no, 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 sorry, Bentley is not an anime girl. Aha! Uh -huh. This acid battery should do the trick. Just walk close to the electrode and voila! Prepare to be hacked, you knave. And then you have to do the hacking thing. This is why I hated this mission. It's because you have to do like five different missions all in one. And, like, if you take one hit with the, uh, battery, I'm pretty sure you lose. So it's kind of, it's kind of extremely, like, stacking the odds against you. But uh, that was me as a, that was me as a child. Not me as an adult. Should be able to handle this. It's not my first rodeo. I'll get you, Contessa. Oh, how many times must you say that? It's not going to happen. I'm dead serious. I'll get you. I'll get you. I'll get you. I mean it. I'll get you. <laughs> yes, yes, so I've heard. <laughs> oh. Oh. That's one down, two to go. Oh. I had better not take any damage See. while carrying this battery to the other terminals. It is, after all, filled with acid. Okay, yep. ready for another session of hacking mastery. Oh god, oh god, oh god, not not one, not one, not one, please. Oh. Yeah, this is why I hated this mission as a kid. Because you literally have to leave. Oh, okay, that's where I was taking most of my damage. And then you got this area, which is just like I said before, no sense fortress, I got this. I can do <laughs> Oh, what were you saying? Okay. Damn it. Overconfidence is a slow and insidious killer. Absolutely rebuked by the game. 
That's what happens when you're not careful. Oh god. <laughs> Sorry, I've completely lost any cool that I had. Okay. This is like the moment I the moment I lost my credibility. Uh caught crystallized on camera. I'm like, I got this. Nope, no he doesn't. Sorry that I'm quiet, I'm just like inconsolably uh, upset of uh, what just happened. Ugh. Oh god, the uh, those ones I. Uh, well, they're a lot faster, but. Oh, you don't shoot? Oh. That's all you can do. Fair enough. Oh. Sorry, I just cho uh, ch choked chat at uh, check chat. Sorry, my brain is, as always, uh, not a hundred percent. Maybe I should approach this through your id instead of your conscious mind. It might help to get around your super ego. <laughs> oh, the contest is actually hilarious. <laughs> Uh, the id is basically the animal portion of the brain, where it mostly focuses on, you One know, computer and I can get out of here. like needs and like want. Like right now, I want to eat, so my id is, uh, you know, telling me to eat. Then you have your ego. Well, I mean, well, you have your id, super ego, then your ego. It's better to go uh, in that direction rather than going. Uh, in ego super ego because the basically the ego is the middle ground between the three god what am i why am i talking about psychology in the middle of this but that's besides my point but um okay so you start with your id your id is just like the animal part it's pure instinct pure want desire it doesn't really care you know how it gets it it just wants it you know feed me it's like an, you know, it's the animal portion of your brain. You know, it focuses on the, the basics. And then you have your ego. Or, then you have your super ego. The super ego is basically like... The way it's been described to me anyways. It's always like, this is like your super, like, you know... Like, uh, restrained like mine where it's like oh you should only eat these foods like the, this is like your like your brain trying to like restrict yourself like oh this is dangerous like well it's it's less with the food analogy it's more like um you know oh this is dangerous we shouldn't be here it's more like you know cautious it's it's more of the it's it's the overthinker Fight it. Don't you want to be my friend? <laughs> no, you horrible eight-legged cow. No. Savage. With that old computer powered up, my work here is done. Wait, you should be good. Both the ego, or both the super ego and the id are both extremes. And then you have your ego, which is more so. Well, your ego, your sort of like personality. Well, not your personality, but more like the. War on the castle, and in the confusion, pull off a heist I've named Operation High Road. First, Murray will take down the spotlights on the main gate with the codes provided by General Clawfoot. Then, with the help of the voice modulator, I'll order Neela's forces to attack. Sly will then paraglide the two of us over to the Contessa's getaway blimp. And we'll use it to get inside her re-education tower. The assault on the castle will undoubtedly draw the shadow guards off their post, 
And if we free Inspector Fox, she's sure to clear out the Contessa. With the Mind Shuffler exposed, I'll plant the bad mojo bomb, and presto, the clockwork eyes are ours. So if the two of you are ready, let's take our positions and get this thing started. <laughs> oh yeah. Then you have the ego, which is sort of like the middle ground. Or it's more, it's, it's less super reserved as your super ego, and less... You know, full consuming, you know, animal. Like, the, the super ego is the balancing force. And All if you right. have. Head for the castle's main gate and power down those searchlights. While you do that, Bentley and I will climb our way up to the top of the castle. Good luck. If you have any imbalance between them, and this is like purely from my understanding, so like, don't, don't take this as gospel, but, um, Purely from my understanding, if you have any of the three, well, this is all from my understanding, but, you know, e even when I just said it, you know. You know, don't take it as full, uh, full blown, like, you know, fact. But, um, basically, if you have an imbalance of any of the three, you know, if you have too much id, you know, you're too impulsive. You're too much ego, you're too busy thinking about everything rather than doing anything like that. And if you have too much super ego, basically you don't accomplish much because you're always, you, you're basically always like. You, you're basically always like trying to like restrain yourself. Oh, I shouldn't do this. Oh, I shouldn't do that. Oh, I shouldn't do this. Or this is gonna get ugly. Oh yeah, the lights are down, Bentley. Time to call in the cavalry. I'll see if I can find some extra firepower to help out. Attention, bloodthirsty mercenary forces. The castle defense is down. Seize this opportunity for aggressive military action by pressing an attack on the castle. Charge! Victory for glory. That should do it. Now that you're done being a warmonger, feel like paragliding over to that blimp? Just make sure to grab the rope hanging off that thing. I don't want to drown. <laughs> Bella turning into a backpack. <laughs> Just make sure to grab the rope hanging off. <laughs> But, uh, yeah. But yeah, basically, that's one version of psychology, by the way. But that's not the whole of psychology. You, your whole psychology doesn't involve just your... Your three, like, mental... Hold on, pal. You know, this could get rough. mind. You, 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 you know, in three different... Uh, Basically, humors. But there's, there's a lot more to it than that. All right, let's head for the re-education tower. What? The mercenaries have breached the castle defenses. All of you, go! Defend this tower to the last man! Don't worry, my dear. I still have time to finish with your readjustment. Let me out of here and I'll readjust your face. Okay, partner. Looks like the Shadow Guard is out of the picture. You ready to free our violent little princess? Affirmative. That Iron Tech 250 is a fully integrated system. Access to Carmelita's restraints has to be in this old terminal somewhere. I like. I said it before and I'll say it again. It's a fucking plank of wood. Like, it's, it's a w large wooden board with metal restraints put inside of it. Or put not inside of it, but like, like embedded onto it. It is not some sort of like. 
it's not like it's <sighs> I've made paper mache that has involved more like finesse to create than that. Like that is just pure <laughs> It's purely ridiculous. That should do it. Isolated the brain pattern. You and I are about to become the best of friends. Okay, new best friend. Hands up, and I mean all of them. My dear, you really should. <gasps> Shadow Guard! Shadow Guard! Come back here, you witch! As for usual, Stormtrooper Carmelita can't hit his shit. Always trying to resolve her problems with the shock pistol. Yep. <laughs> Truculent. Stand clear, Sly. This might have a larger blast than anticipated. Bentley, you okay? This is no place for an asthmatic. But I've located one of the clockwork eyes. Can you find the other? No worries, Taps. It's safely in hand. Neela? Thanks for clearing out the Contessa. Nothing I did could pry her away from the clockwork eyes. Hmm, wouldn't she be enough for the old bird? Ta-ta! Yeah. Bentley, take the eye and escape on the See, blimp. I told you. I'm going after Neela. He's working with a member but of the claw gang. It, this wasn't in the plan. Bentley, when has anything been part of the plan? Like, when, when was Murray and Sly getting captured part of the plan? Don't worry about it, dude. Fiction? Up, Bentley, you're about to come under fire. Get to the blimp's turret and stay sharp. God, this is the problem is that you like, can so easily fall down too far and end up having to make up lost time. Where in the heck did she go? You see, <laughs> like the thing is, is that <laughs> just with all the other Neil missions, like. It's super easy to like end up making one mistake. Heads up, Bentley. You're about to come under fire. Get to the blimp's turret and stay sharp. What? See. The thing is that you gotta follow like a second behind her the entire way, or else she'll just like screw you over. Like she will bump into you. Heads up, Bentley. You're about to come under fire. Get to the blimp's turret and stay sharp. Okay, she, so she goes left here. Whoops, I didn't know if she was actually trying to juke me or something. Cause you look so embarrassed if you if she went uh, like over the well and you went down the well. Dang it, you gotta be careful that your thing doesn't uh, hit anything. Sorry, I'm just, I'm just focused enough because this is a place that I uh, spent hours as a kid. Like, look at this map. Look how easy it is. This, it's been to fall repeatedly. Hmm. You really should watch where you're going. This place is dangerous. <laughs> uh. Don't you dare! That eye is mine! It's mine! Ah. Actually, Mr. Cooper, the 
I belongs to me. You gonna fight, lady? Oh, we're, oh, we're going to Bentley in the turret. About to come under fire. Take yeah. the blimp's turret and stay sharp. Okay, I can do this. I can do this. I like how many turret sections there are. I can see you! You can't hide from me! Oh god, he's just flying directly at me. Don't kamikaze me. Are talking about like kamikaze fighter pilots, then. <laughs> and I'm just like, well, maybe I shouldn't talk about that. Well, I mean, the, the strategy of uh, basically like no retreat, not even, not even to like go specifically into kamikaze uh, pilots. But the strategy of no retreat, if if presented by the fighter themselves, and not encouraged, but. That wasn't part of the plan, Bentley. That I belongs to me, and I want it back. No way. You think I'm crazy? Actually, on second thought, don't answer that. I really don't want your professional opinion. <laughs> Not crazy, just stupid. You're an ignorant child playing dress up in his father's legacy. Oh, I know all about you and the Cooper clan. Then you'll understand why this eye needs to be destroyed. Short-sighted fool. I have no interest in your narrow interpretation of morality. I'm above all that. Above good and evil. And you think I'd give the eye to someone that's above morality? Enough talk, insect. It will be um, just as easy <laughs> and more Well, technically arachnids are separate from insects, but like also... But yeah, as I was saying, like... If somebody, like, doesn't have a plan to come back, like, in their, you know, they're like, you know, the, the superior officer's like, okay. Like, that's, that's somebody that doesn't, I mean, depending on their um, mental state. Like, like it, can, it, it, it either goes one of two ways. Either they're extremely dangerous to their enemies, or they're just extremely terrific. But like if you have the right mixture of crazy But, uh, yeah, as I was saying. Like, if you have the right mix of, like, you know, crazy combined with the right amount of, like, caution, you, you can have, a like, somebody that doesn't have plans to come back, but they want to do maximum damage to them. Like, like, say, Doom Guy from Doom. Like, that guy, do you think that guy has any plans other than destroying demons? Like, do you really think he's like... Like, do you think he's concerned about his own well-being while he does that shit? You've shown me the error of my ways. What? I feel sorry for you. All your education and you still don't know right from wrong. <laughs> uh, 
I know enough not to let my guard down around an intellectually superior opponent. She got the eye? She's got the eye! <laughs> uh, How's this thing work? What's this do? And this? Guys, help! Carmelita took the eye, and she's trying to get away in one of the Contessa's tanks! Don't worry about it, little buddy. I won't let her get away. <laughs> just immediately uh can I, can I can i please get a restart can i, can I just drive this off there we go <gasps> i like how the game doesn't even like notify me of that but like hot damn i immediately hit those barrels <gasps> Wait, like like someone like the doom guy like he he's not worried about his own like safety He's worried about destroying demons. Okay? So when he goes in full tilt, he just absolutely like, you know. Yeah, like, like he goes full tilt and like, like he. That's the thing, yeah. That's it. There's nowhere left to run. We both know I can beat you in a fight. So why don't you just hand over the eye? You're right, Cooper. In a battle of strength, you've proven yourself. But with this clockwork eye, I can battle in your mind. Yeah. <laughs> Did she just T pose on me? Careful. Oh, God. Oh, my God. I like how her head grows as she does that. Oh, as a child, I, I just thought it was creepy that she did that, but like... Gotta be, you gotta be careful with Kippa. Or she jumps up and tanks. Through the recovery move. Yeah, come on, dog. Oh, god damn me. She's right back to me. In a battle of intellect, I mean, you were short of acting, just scared them, but... I actually finished the point I was trying to make, but like, oh, okay, well, let me try to finish it off just real quick. Like, you, you can end up with like a warrior that just, just like their entire existence turns from being a warrior to being a weapon to do maximum damage before breaking. That's a strong mind, Cooper. I never would have guessed. I was sneaking up on an unconscious woman. Yeah, let me adjust my chair because I'm obviously leading off the other plan. But the Contessa was beaten, and the clockwork eyes were finally mine. The Contessa was arrested and brought to trial for the crime she committed while working for Interpol. Their PR damage control went one step further by promoting Mila the hero of Prague, to the rank of captain. Carmelita, still on the outs with Interpol, had to run with the rest of us. To my surprise and eternal delight, I got to help my favorite policewoman escape from the cops.
I tried to put it all out of my mind. This claw business was spiraling out of control, and I knew that my gang was at the center of it. We'd be back in action soon enough, but for now, well, we just laid low for a while. Yeah. Yeah, the gang's starting to get serious. They're uh, starting to hide rather than uh, going out, having a having a ball. Now we have a Gene Bison, Jean Bison. He who takes the iron horse. Following the trail of spice shipments, we made our way up to Nunavut Bay, Canada, the secret hub of Jean Bisson's shipping empire. As a young man, he trekked across Canada to strike it rich during the gold rush of 1852. An avid prospector, he took some chances and ended up buried alive in an avalanche. Miraculously, the quick freeze kept him alive, and 120 years later, thanks to global warming, he thawed out. A product of his time, he dreams of taming the wild north, damming every river and chopping down all the trees with progress delivered at the sharp end of an axe. Shipping spice for the claw gang proved a lucrative way to bankroll his one-man war against nature, and yet, I have to feel a little sorry for him. He's just a normal guy from the 1850s. Back in his day, he'd be a hero, but today, he's a villain. Either way, that man's got more than his fair share of the clockwork parts. What a low-tech guy like John Bassan is doing with robot parts is a mystery. I almost don't want to know. But as always, it's only a matter of time before I find out. He who tames the iron horse. Oh, he who tames. I, thought I, said, I think I said rides a iron horse. But yeah, that's, uh, that's going to be it for Sly for today. I've got to lead on the clockwork part. Head through town and out into the wilderness. Like, man, I can't even... I didn't even remember that this game, like... I wouldn't even say takes a shot, but like mentions global warming. Like, damn. I like, just this game really has it all. Like, like not even in terms of like a negative sense, but like I mean, like it just sort of like you go all around the world. It mentions all these different themes. Like, this is a really like this is a game that like when you play it a second time and you recognize these references for what they are, it's like damn. It really like, <laughs> like did everything. They really, they really like didn't leave anything behind. But they made a full world and interesting characters. And uh, by the way, just in case you uh, you're thinking of uh, freezing yourself and uh, living forever, uh, that just unfortunately it uh, unfortunately just kills you. <laughs> yeah, crystallizing the blood in your veins uh, by turning it to ice. Uh, not easy to reverse it. Yeah, you. Uh, yeah, it's. It, it's not. It's not keeping you alive while you're frozen, because that's possible. It's reviving you after you've been frozen. That's the problem. Like making it so you, like your body is in minimum like function and like just stagnant without any sort of like permanent damage is one thing but reviving you after the fact like i think the revival is more dangerous than the uh like putting you what is essentially on uh, ice uh oh yeah it is on ice on ice with like minimum life support but like yeah i wouldn't recommend it i wouldn't recommend it also god just to just to go on that tangent like there's actually people who have like their brains saved up it's like yeah like or have their brains like preserved like the potential of being able to re be revived and it's like and the thing is is that the reason that they do it is because it's a lot easier to have a brain preserved on ice and washed and maintained watched not washed watched and maintained than to have an entire body so it's just cheaper and it's like imagine just being ahead like a hundred a thousand years from now or a hundred 
a thousand years from now, you get revived and you're just a head. And that's all you're, you're just going to be one of those heads from Futurama. And it's like, why? And on the same time, I'd be like, it's better than being dead. I'll give it that. <laughs> oh. If this was the real, I mean, to be fair, this, the game involves magic. So like, John Basson in this world doesn't like, seem like a rare event. Or like an impossible event, but like in the real world, it's just fortunately impossible. But yeah, see you guys around on back later. I'm just gonna go eat some food and I'll be back in like 20, 30, 40 minutes. Now, tops.